want to build my love a cabin. <laughs> Just kidding. I want to build myself a cabin. Yeah. Don't want to fall. So yes, okay, this is the location we're going to build a cabin on a cliff. Our main cabin is down at the water. Our main off-grid cabin. And this is sort of at the top of our property, which is 20 acres. There's this rock bluff here that every time we've come to, we just picture a cabin here. So we're going to build one. So we're just kind of um, marking out where we're going to go. We have to, this is a all rock. So we're just going to put it on the rock, I guess. And we're going to, what are we going to do? Bolt in footings. footings. So we're just figuring out angles. We're going to cut some trees down. There's lots of dead standing trees and some trees that we have to cut that are just in the way. That's only going to be 10 by 10. And then we're going to have a six foot deck that comes out. Six by 14 foot deck, set of stairs on the extra four foot part and a railing. Oh. Done. Chopping trees down scares me. Now we've got, um, we had to take those trees down because they, oh, there's a good, this one. Yeah, you can they were um, in the way of where we want to put the cabin. But we're going to use them. I am going to keep these down here and chainsaw mill them and use them in the cabin build. And then the leftover stuff we'll use for firewood. So it's going to have a tiny little stove in it too. admittedly a little bit of a brat. I have all along been like, this is my project. I'm building these cabins. I'm building this cabin. I'm building all the cabins. This is to my husband and like go away. But the reality is, is he would like to be a part of building these cabins, this cabin that we're building out on that rock cliff. And that wouldn't be very nice of me now, would it? If I didn't let him join in the fun. <clears throat> and I might need a little help along the way. So we're going to do the foundation together. And I think after that, I'm going to try and take on the majority of, of the cabin by myself. The plan is to take the knowledge that I learned from building my little doghouse and from building this shed and combining both of those two experiences to come up with how to build a cabin. Um, I really don't know what I'm doing, but we learn by doing, someone has told me, which I'm all about that. For reasons you don't care, we've decided on a, a cabin like this, a roof rather than like a, a shed style roof. A little tiny little sleeping loft in it, 10 by 10. Uh, we have two people and four dogs and a cat. So I was gonna go eight by eight, but that's pretty tiny for all of us to kind of try and fit in there. This is a cabin that's going to have no electricity. I don't even think it's going to have running water. It might have a little sink in it or just a basin or something to wash the dishes in, or I might do something outside. Uh, a little tiny little wood stove. I'm going to insulate it, I think, um, partially, maybe not the, entirely. It's not that big of a deal. I'm probably only going to go out there a few times in the winter. So I've entertained doing a timber frame. But the reality is, is that all of the material has to be carried on foot down. I think it's maybe 300 feet. So it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a lug to get all the material down there. 
done a lot of muling before. I just think it too would be a little bit dangerous to try and lift big, like not big timbers, but you know, big enough and the location enough is precarious as it is that I don't want to complicate things. And so I'm going to stick with doing two by four framing mill as much as I can. That's the goal. It's raining here right now. So just sprinkling, but I don't really want to open the mill if it's going to start to pour. So I'm going to go on a little log hunt and um, find some logs to gather in a little pile and get them ready to mill and get this thing going. Okay, I've got three hemlock here. One, two, three that I'm gonna grab for now. The thing that I'm uh, thinking about here though is I don't actually think I can take that length of log up through the forest based on the width space of the trees in, in there. I'll have to go and see. Yeah, okay, so I can only take at best at, at longest 14 feet through there. I think I'm gonna cut that to 10 feet. I can take 10 feet for sure. I just have to think about this and then I'm gonna turn this around so that I can actually load the log on I sh yeah I don't know why I didn't have it over here There she is in all her glory, my little, little pile. Okay, I've got to go back down and get the, um, the uh, excavator attachment because I prefer to, I prefer to pick up the logs with that and put that on, put them on the mill that way. I just find I have, um, I can see better with the forklift attachment on. I have a really hard time seeing the bunker and I feel like I'm going to hit the mill with the excavator, the way that the arm comes down I've got really good vision, so I prefer that. Okay, I've got to put uh, I've got to put Mr. Big there on the mill. Mr. Big is a little bit more than 16 feet, and I need to mill the 16 footers first. So we are making this cabin the subfloor out of two by eights, true two by eights. So people might think that we should go bigger, but the problem with that is is that everything has to be carried down a, a really steep bank by on foot to take everything there uh, and I'll be carrying the majority of the wood down. So I'm sticking with two by eights. We are sticking with two by eights. 
and I think that'll be good enough. Ooh, there's a bear. There's a bear. This is the same bear that's been hanging around here for a while. I'll try and get him. There's Mr. Bear. Uh-oh. Hannah. 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 Hannah didn't know that there was a bear in the area, nor did she know that that bear was coming after her. She was okay. He didn't touch her. But it made me question what type of bear this was, because that's a very untypical behavior of bears in our area. They're usually quite timid and afraid and mind their own business. This guy, however, if you look at his claws, is a young grizzly. This guy's been hanging around here for about a week and he's generally been minding his own business, but he's charged now twice. Here he charged at both Hannah and I. We are just on the porch and I didn't get it on video, but after I stopped recording, he did charge at us a little bit just to test, test the waters. He doesn't look like a typical grizzly, to me anyway, but it's because he's young. He hasn't grown his hump yet, and he hasn't grown into his ears. Oh, what a big tongue you have. He is not afraid. It's his behavior that is very characteristic of a grizzly. He should soon leave, though, up into the high country. It was nice to meet you.